welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L, Kevin Jank. I'm here and I'm super absorbent, like a deodorant. Yes, because today <laughs> we, we are reading Incredible Hulk, issue 209 from 1976, and the villain is Absorbing Man. That's right. Waiting, waiting for a lot of applause. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. should have been a drum roll and, you know, thunderous applause, but no. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Observing Man. He's a really cool villain, but I will say this. In these early days, they were drawing him a lot like Impossible Man. He had these yeah. giant ears and a pointy head. <laughs> very, very pointy. It's, yeah, unnaturally pointy. No man could have a head that pointy, I would think, but... <laughs> Yeah, so bizarre. He, he put his head in like one of those bowling ball shiners, apparently, at one point, and it just buffed it to a fine point. Yeah, the creators here are Len Wein is the writer, and uh, our old pal Sal Bissima is the artist. And this wasn't just the stylistic choice that Sal made. I looked at some other Absorbing Man issues from around this time, and they drew him like this, apparently. <laughs> That's just what it was. Yeah. So. Huh. It's very odd. Like, was that part of what Loki did to him? Like, <laughs> I don't I'm think you no. absorb things and also <laughs> going to make your head funny. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> make you a clown. <laughs> All right. Before we get into this uh, issue here of the Hulk, let's remind everybody if you're watching on YouTube and uh, yeah, just YouTube, <laughs> please like and subscribe. We're up to 205 subscribers, Jack. We picked up Ooh. a few more. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Hey, uh, a, a quick note about a previous episode of Flea Market Fantasy. We had a fella, one of the members of the Flea Army, a fella named RP. He uh, he left a comment explaining why that Lois Lane issue is called I Am Curious Black. You remember that? It was like, I yeah, am curious yeah. and black. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was it's curious about why it's called that. <laughs> well, at that time, as, as RP informs me, there was a Swedish film called I Am Curious, parentheses, yellow. And oh. this film was popular, and it was also erotic. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this Superman issue could have gone a lot differently if she had been like, hey, <laughs> Superman, instead of asking him if you wanted to marry her, he's just like, you want to get down? <laughs> I think more comic books should be influenced by Swedish erotic cinema. I think it'd be really good, but yeah. An odd choice for the <laughs> Lewis Lane to make a parody. Uh. So well, I guess the writers were perverts. That's what I'm yeah. taking yeah. from this. Very <laughs> strange. But anyway, thanks to RP for that. And uh, again, uh, check us out over there on YouTube. All right. So this issue of the Incredible, you love the Incredible Hulk, Jank. Yeah. Yeah, right? You love Hulk. Uh, sure. I mean, <laughs> again, as as years have gone on, it's kind of like I love Peter David's Hulk. And I don't know work. that any of the other runs have been that great, but I love all the other Hulks except Peter David. <laughs> this is the Hulk I grew up with as a kid. Um, I mean, I didn't start reading him until a couple years after this, but um, I like the big dumb Hulk. I like the way he talks in this issue is great. <laughs> this is my Hulk. Uh, you know, puny human and that kind of stuff. Big fan. Yeah. <laughs> classic rampaging Hulk stuff. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Absorbing Man, his real name is Carl Crusher Creel. That's right. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Uh, first appearance of Journey into Mystery 114, 1965 as Absorbing Man. Because apparently he also appeared in Daredevil 1, 1964, as a called Rocky Davis. I don't know what, what happened. <laughs> but apparently... <laughs> I forgot to really dig into this, but I think what happened was is uh, Crusher Crew, he was a former heavyweight boxer turned enforcer for a bunch of gangsters. And at one point he boxed uh, battling Jack Murdoch. So oh, nice. I, I think maybe theoretically, like he was that one of the guys in that issue and then they just changed his name or something or whatever. But then he's not really Crusher Crew, is he? Or do, I don't, I'm very confused. Figured, like, why? Well, it's not like the name Crusher Creel is that amazing. Like, you had to change the name. You could have gone with whatever it was. He's going to be yeah. called the Absorbing Man, mostly. So, why not just stick with the name you created in the first place? Yeah, and keep in mind, this is just a note that I found on uh, Marvel Fandom, you know, that website. They put that in there, first appearance. So, yeah. who knows? Maybe someone was drunk. 
but yeah, yeah. so he may have been a <laughs> issue one. Uh, but yeah, he was an enforcer and he got thrown in jail and that's where Loki found him. And, uh, Loki wanted someone to go beat up Thor for him. You know, he always trying to get Thor. So apparently he like, uh, slipped something into Crusher Creel's prison food. Oh, slipped him a Mickey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he gave him the powers to absorb things. Like, uh, he can absorb, like if he's standing here and he touches a, a cement pillar, boom, his whole body turns cement. Yeah. But he can, but he can move around and stuff, you know? <laughs> so just, just yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, I don't know if you heard about this, but there was an, uh, an issue of Spider-Man eventually where he got addicted to cocaine and, oh. uh, <laughs> like he touched a bunch of cocaine, turned into a pile of cocaine, and then they used a bunch of fans on him yeah. to spread him out over the room and then cut him up and sold him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did hear he get he had some narcotic issues later on in his life. Yeah. But um I don't that's know how they ever got himself back together after that. Like how do you uh, come back together when you're you've been absorbed by like, you know, yeah. 50 different people's blood? Yeah, I think that would be it. I'd like, be dead after that. Yeah. There's no coming back from that one. But that's how they usually defeated him. They would uh trick him into absorbing things that he didn't want to absorb and it always backfire. Like, I think the first time Thor fought him, one of the first times, he tricked him into absorbing helium, and then he floated up into space. <laughs> so that's how they got rid of him. But uh, <laughs> good old absorbing that. He can also absorb, like, it, like in this issue, we see him like kind of absorb the Hulk's power, too, when he's near the Hulk. He, he like, turns green. and So he can also absorb, like, energy and power off people as well not just material substance yeah uh, that got a little confusing because apparently he had also turned his clothes green which i don't yes. know why that happened yeah so because uh, they, 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 choice. they explain that like uh loki the enchantment whatever he it also works that ball and chain he's always carrying because when he was yeah. in prison he had a ball and chain around his ankle so he just carries <laughs> that with him now and uh, that also changes and so does his clothing and everything else yeah yeah that's um <laughs> He's a, he's a pretty cool guy, this uh, absorbing man. Now, later in life, he also uh, he, he yeah. got with Titania, right? Yep, or that's Dave. right. Yeah. That's, yeah, and yeah. He, he's not he's, always a bad guy, this Crusher girl. Yeah, they did eventually try to mellow him out. I think he uh, tried to reform here and there. Uh, I know recently he kind of came back into the Hulk's life during the whole Immortal Hulk thing. They started a project called, like, Gamma Flight. I believe it was. Hey, wait a minute. Off of Alpha Flight. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I've seen this fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was he was a part of that, and so was uh, Titania, I believe. So. Do you know anything about this? Was this part of that, or uh, I did see a little picture of him as he for a brief period later on. He was going as a hero named Lightning Bowl or something. Or. Um, are you, <laughs> you aware of this? Uh, and now it doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Here. Let's <laughs> just pretend that was a fever dream. But I'm pretty sure I remember. I saw it. Yeah, I didn't look into it. But anyway, I like Absorbing Man. Uh, this outfit, he has a, a go, uh, like a dopey costume he's wearing, this yellow outfit. But I like him when he's just in his prison pants, and that's it. <laughs> it's like prison. <laughs> yeah. It's straight prison pants. And he's carrying Yeah, it's kind of like Sandman. When you give him that weird costume yeah. he had later on, I'm like, no, yep. no, no, no. Just stick with the shirt. That's all you yeah, need. Yeah, Absorbing Man and Sandman. That, that'd be a good combo, those guys. Yeah, how, how you just always be, <laughs> <laughs> always be sand. Always be sand. All right. So there are a couple other villains in this book. Uh, they who wield power. Did you ever hear of these bozos? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I had to look up who they were because they don't really reveal it here. And it's, it's hard to, like, look up, like, who were those weirdos in Incredible <laughs> 209? Like, but I well, did find it, yeah. Yeah, if you just go to the issue from Marvel Fandom, they have all the people who are in the issue, and boom, that's how I found. But yeah, they have uh, there's yeah, three guys. The blonde guy was <laughs> Tyrannus, Keeper oh, of the okay. Flame, and Prince Ray. They're the three they who wield power. That's like a oh, trio, yeah. and they, they operate out of the city of El Dorado, the <laughs> mystical city of the Golden City of El Dorado. I guess that's a good base, better than Greensburg, PA. Yeah, kind of off right out of El Dorado. And their first appearance was in uh, in Marvel Team-Up, issue 26, 1974. Their final appearance was Incredible Hulk 241, 
Um, I guess people are like, who are these idiots and why? Uh, <laughs> You've dragged us on long enough. No one cares. Yeah, we don't see in this issue. You never see what they look like. They're just always in shadow. They're like these three yeah, guys. Yeah, they have big, big cool, like uh, cloak collar type things. Big flared out collars. That's what all you know can see about them. Um, there's also uh, another fellow in this book. He's not a villain, but uh, he's a guy I never knew existed. But apparently, he had a prominent role in the Hulk's life. Uh, Jim Wilson. Yeah, you know Jim Wilson. Sure am. Yeah, he came back a little bit during the uh, the Peter David run. Where uh, he was killed off because he had the AIDS. <laughs> yeah, that's what I read. He got the AIDS. Yeah. And I also read that, uh, well, the description I read, on, on they said he they didn't know how he contracted HIV. Yeah, they didn't reveal it. Yeah, it was just yeah. kind of, uh, yeah, they yeah. left it open. But his uh, first appearance was Incredible Hulk 131, 1970, created by Roy Thomas and Herb Trimpey. And he died in Incredible Hulk 420, 1994. He was the nephew of Sam Wilson, Falcon. Yeah. Had no idea. But basically, he was just, uh, what's that dope that always followed Hulk around? <laughs> Rick Jones, yeah. Rick Jones, yeah. Rick Jones. Kind He's of. like a new Rick Jones. Yeah. yeah, like Rick Jones, I think, you know, had moved on to being Captain Marvel part-time by this point, so uh, they needed a new one. Yeah. Somebody who could, you know, be the, the more human element of the Hulk books. Now, I, since you're familiar with his death, I also read that uh, when he was dying – he asked Bruce Banner to give him a blood transfusion, thinking that the yeah. gamma radiated blood from the Hulk could cure his AIDS. And, and I guess it probably would. Like, I mean, we saw what it did to Jennifer Walters. And, and uh, Banner said, nope, AIDS, but... I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a weird decision. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess he, he, he more than anyone knows what the life of being a gamma person does to people. So <laughs> you know what's better than that? Uh, it's better <laughs> than death. <laughs> That's <what> that <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Bruce Banner's tried to kill himself multiple times, so maybe, <laughs> maybe the grass is always greener on the other side. There. <laughs> what's worse than rampaging rampaging Hulk with AIDS? That would have been bad <laughs> for the people. But, yeah, that would have been real bad. Now, you mentioned that there's also, we see a, a blonde-haired mystery man in this book. Yeah, he's amnesiac. And you don't know who yeah. that is, right? Nope. All right, remind me when we get there. That's a teaser for the people to drag oh. them into the issue. So when we get there, <laughs> now you I'll tell it. you who that guy is. Right. Ooh. So that's that's my guess is going to be Clay Quartermain, but he's also in that same scene. So it's like, oh, not Clay Quartermain. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea who that guy is, but wasn't he one of the Hulkbusters? Is that who that was? Clay Quartermain? Yeah, yeah. He also was in that, uh, the last Peter David Hulk book that we did. Remember? Clay Quartermain yes. was their, their group there, so he yeah. stuck around for a good while. All right. Yeah, because Doc Samson is also in this book, so. Yeah, Doc Samson. Which is very close to Doc Savage, so I smile. <laughs> I get a little happy when I hear his name. Uh, all right. Yep. All right, I think that's all the background we have uh, here for this uh, issue. Why don't you describe the cover for us, Jack? Okay, so we got a uh, very 70s-looking cover. We got the uh, the. Oh, I, I should Hulk. mention this is drawn by Ed Hannigan. Not oh. obviously, so Ed Hannigan did the art. Look at that. So we got the – it says the Incredible Hulk up in the top left corner, 30 cents, two, issue 209. We got a cool little shot of the Hulk. Hulk there and against an orange background. Um, and then it's got the Marvel Comics group thing across the top, says the Incredible Hulk. Uh, not the greatest of fonts. It's just kind of a little bit slanted. I don't know. It's okay, but nothing. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> um, and then we got the, a big shot of a construction site and the absorbing man is apparently absorbed so much that he's like giant size now. Like he looks like he's, you know, 10 feet tall or something like that. Oh, way bigger uh, than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard to tell with this. Because look at the cranes. Like the, built, his but... cranes are wee tiny at his feet. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like 100 feet tall. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's all in different colors. He's like the top of him looks like he's made of steel, uh, maybe down to like his belly button. And then he turns into a uh, kind of rock, I guess, like two different kinds of rock. He's got like a yellow rock for his upper thighs and then he's got like a redder rock down at the bottom like brick yeah like uh, a sandstone and brick maybe yeah really. and also it looks like he's the heavyweight champion too he's got the title <laughs> belt right. yeah 
beat battling Jack Murdoch and got that title back. <laughs> uh, and so he's choking out the Hulk with his uh, giant uh, ball and chain there. And he says, the absorbing man has come back for revenge. And what Crusher Creel wants, he gets. Yeah, I love this cover. This is a classic <laughs> comic book cover for the 70s. This is just great. If I was a kid, I'm buying this immediately. I see it. But again, Dig Absorbing Man. Did you uh, open the book and realize there was maybe like three pages of this? And... <laughs> well, look at his, uh, like, his uh, goofy ears and his like torpedo shaped head on Absorbing Man. <laughs> yep. That is nuts. And yeah. like when I saw the cover, I just thought this was like an artist, uh, you know, uh, taking liberty here with uh, making him big. But apparently Absorbing Man can grow large like this if he absorbs. Like, I read something like if he absorbs a building, the mass of a building, he can grow the size of a building. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would make sense if you're absorbing the mass as, uh, along with it. I thought yeah, he just kind of got the, know. the, you know, the uh, chemical makeup of something. Yes, but if he that's what I always thought. Mass, yeah. yeah. I never even realized he could absorb energy from people. I thought he was always just like he could absorb whatever material substance he's touching. Like, but so, Yeah. His powers seem uh, pretty tricky to get a hold of. He's absorbing, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. We open it up and we get a big splash page of uh, the absorbing man is out for blood and he's screaming it. And uh, he says, and Jade Jaws, I want yours. That's his little nickname for the Hulk, Jade Jaws. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Does he use that? He runs that. <laughs> yes. <in the ground. laughs> That's a terrible Hulk nickname. Hulk once. It's not even like a shorter nickname. You're, you've made it longer. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, we get Absorbing Man. He's wearing his goofy yellow costume in this. It's just like a yellow bodysuit with, like, uh, no, his arms are exposed. And he's got, like, black rings around the shoulders and uh, blue wristbands, blue boots, and, like, that fake heavyweight championship around his waist. It's a terrible costume. Just awful. <laughs> And I think they who will power give it to him, right? Doesn't he make reference to in this book? Like, hey, you yeah. gave me a stupid costume. I'm going to wear this. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, we can clearly see why they got written out of the book and <laughs> forgotten about. Nobody cares. <laughs> this is and your the top costuming ability. In the top right corner of this page, there's like a disco ball. And it's shining yeah. down a picture of the Incredible Hulk. And <laughs> I guess that's what they use to, like, uh, yeah, because on the next page we see the shadowy figures of the they who will power and absorbing man's yelling at them like, ah, hey, you bums. I want to get the Hulk. And it's they like want the to get the Hulk. Maybe just supposed to mirror his, you know, ball and chain, like it's some kind of symbolism or something there. But I don't know. I think the disco ball is there flying like uh, just the TV monitor, it, like projects images like it's their way to like uh, convey information in a uh, bizarre fashion. Because they're from space, but they're not from space. I don't know. They're very weird. The less I know about the they who will power, the happier I am. So, be, because when they, they say, hey, crew, we want you to go beat up the Hulk for us, you know, and, and he's giving them the business. So then they fill them in on their background. And basically their background is a bunch of failures. Like they've never succeeded in any other plans. And I guess they appeared in a lot of Marvel team up issues. So yeah. they say Boy, Ghost they held off real quick in this. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost Rider <laughs> and Spider-Man thwarted their one plan because they got some guy called, uh, what was this guy's name? The Uncanny Orb. <laughs> Did he call yeah. that? Do you know this guy? <laughs> that's I, think guy that was, I think that's the guy with the eyeball for a head. Yeah. He was a big part of uh, Original Sin. Like he wanted the Watcher's eye after he got murdered. <laughs> what? I never heard yeah. of this guy in my life. <laughs> A canny orb. And then next they had uh, Stegron, Dinosaur Man. He lost to uh, Spider-Man and Black Panther. And then uh, the Human Torch and Thor thwarted their plan to uh, have a revolt among the Lava Men. So Ooh. basically these guys <laughs> can't win anything. Uh, yeah. But, Even, uh, I mean, I've read stories with Tyrannus before. I think he was in, like, after Peter David left, they they had a, a Hulk story with uh, him in it, and I was bored silly. I think that was John Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we get a, uh, a shot from behind of his order being, and look at those ears, man. They are enormous. <laughs> Sticking out of his head. Yeah. <laughs> he must have uh, surgery before he landed Titania. 
<laughs> She's not going to put up with this. But he gets mad. He says, all right, I'm going to go get Hulk. But uh, you guys are a bunch of dummies. And he smashes their little uh, floating orb with his ball and chain. But uh, he's going to go kill him some Hulk. All right. Yeah. So now we go and we check in on Bruce Banner. And why don't you explain this scene for us here, Jake? <laughs> uh, so this is a an era of the Hulk I'm not super familiar with. But apparently he's just kind of pouring himself some... Uh, <laughs> some milk into his eggs there that he's trying to cook up. Uh, he's still got his purple pants, so that's nice, but he's, he's wearing a yeah. white t-shirt. <laughs> I want to talk about his purple pants in a minute, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he's got a, a neighbor lady who I guess owns the building, I believe, um, and she comes in and she's like, hey, uh, you know what's going on? He's just, oh, just cooking some eggs. And uh, She's like, oh, well, you should probably find a job. And he's like, yeah, I, I need to find a job for sure. And she's like, oh, well, I got this paper right here. Uh, the, the April Summer's Employment Aid. A copy of today's paper open to the help wanted ads and a pin. You just close your eyes, jab the pin into the paper, and where it lands, that's where you begin. So. Yeah, now, do you know who this April Summer's, summers? Does this April Summer's ever pop up later in Hulk, or is this just like. I've you? never her at all okay. no <laughs> she's a she's a good looking lady who has short blonde hair and she wears like a skin tight red pants and a skin tight red halter top like a little um <laughs> yeah i, I guess luck. that's how you walk around yeah and so he's going to go get a new job and he's looking around you know the one ads and everything and he goes out oh we well we cut away from there for a minute now we cut to uh glenn talbot yeah and Betty Talbot, who was Betty Ross, Ross. right? Yep. Yeah. Not Betsy yeah, Ross. Betty Ross. <laughs> yeah. Ross. Get tripped this up one on did that. not make flags. So Betty Ross was uh, Bruce Banner's love interest er, originally, and then her dad was Thunderbolt Ross, right? Yeah, and she did not like, or he did not like the fact that uh, he was dating her daughter. So he her brought daughter. in Glenn Talbot to kind of. Uh, break up that love he, he was hoping glenn talbot and his daughter would get together and they did because she was convinced that bruce banner couldn't be she could never be with bruce banner because she knew he was the hulk right like she knew yeah yeah i think by that point she did and like bruce told her you know i can't i can't be with you i'm the hulk mm -hmm. so she's like all right glenn you're up buddy <laughs> you're next <laughs> so she marries glenn talbot and now yeah. this glenn talbot guy give, give me his background he hates the hulk is that his deal yeah, he's also a military guy. Uh, I think he was kind of, you know, Thunderbolt Ross's second in command, basically. So he also is always hunting the Hulk and, uh, he big, big mad on for the Hulk all the time. Not sure if he knows about the Bruce Banner connection or not at this point. Uh, but I know eventually, I think in like issue 250, I believe he dies fighting the Hulk. Like he's got some big war wagon thing. Yeah. That's like, like an experimental, you know. Technology, and uh, I think he kills himself. Like they're fighting under like a volcano or something, and somehow he ends up killing himself. <laughs> it's like the beginning or the second half of Stripes, where they have that Winnebago <laughs> that they drive. That's his war wagon. Yeah. He, yeah. So, all right. So this is Glenn Talbot, he's been through some stuff recently. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what, but it sounds like <laughs> he, he's been he's seen some shit, and he's talking. He's having this conversation. The sun's coming up. Uh, they're out in the desert or whatever you know. And uh, and Betty's there, and they're having this conversation. And this is like the most amicable divorce in the history of mankind. It really he is. Just, <laughs> yeah. He just, he just he says, "Hey, uh, assets to fight over." <laughs> yeah, I guess not. He, he just said, "Hey, uh, hey, Betty, uh, this, our marriage it ain't working out, is it?" And she's like, "Nope, not so much." <laughs> He's like, "All right, well, let's just call it quits, huh?" And she's like, "Cool. <laughs> I'll help you pack." <laughs> That's basically it. Yeah. It's like, well, will you do, Betty? I, I guess I'll come help you pack. <laughs> my, my, my divorce is far different. <laughs> There's a lot more screaming involved. But no, this, yeah. this is very peaceful. This is, <laughs> yeah, I guess if, uh, if you're both just, you know, nobody wants anything to do with each other anymore, you can just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Betty's always been pining for Bruce Banner. That's her true love, you know. So. Yeah, she's just kind of going through this the motions. Kind of filler. Yeah, this is just a stopgap till Bruce comes back. 
So, all right, now we cut over and we see Bruce going around town looking for jobs. This is a big splash page, like a montage, and no one wants this clown working for him. Because why? Well, one, he, he never admits what his background is. Like, he could just yep. say, hey, I'm, a, I'm a former nuclear physicist or whatever. <laughs> I should be able to wash your dishes. Nope, he doesn't do any of that. And uh, also, he's still well, he wearing his damn... You know, he's the Hulk. Can't let people know. <laughs> he's wearing those damn purple pants. That's the problem. <laughs> if you see a guy come in asking for jobs and he's wearing purple pants, no thank you. <laughs> like, what? You're able to get the jobs a gigolo. That's it. <laughs> how did he get in the habit of wearing purple pants? <laughs> and, and how does he have so many pairs of them? Because every time he turns yeah. into the Hulk... <laughs> That duffel bag he's carrying with him is full of purple pants. They must only make stretchy enough pants that they won't rip in purple. Like any other color, they don't do it. But <laughs> well, well, they rip from like the knees down. <laughs> yep. But he's, but you know, his man region stays. <laughs> he's covered his, yeah, exactly. Everyone knows <laughs> but, purple pants are really tough groins. So yeah, Bruce Banner, he's having no luck on the job front, you know. He's just uh, getting shot down everywhere he goes. So uh he comes back home to his new apartment, and there's that lady again. I already forget her name. Oh, April Summers. Is that what it is? Something like that. And she's like, hey, any luck there on the job? And he's like, nah, I can't, I can't find anything. She's like, well, wait a minute. You know, it's all who you know there. Like, uh, the father on, he's like the father on good times. Like every time, just, <laughs> no, no, they wouldn't hire me. And she's like, well, it's all who you know there. And I just happen to know a fella. Who runs a construction site? And if you head over there right now, he'll hire you. And he's construction like, oh. workers are known for their tolerance of people in purple pants. <laughs> it's like, thanks, April. And when when he's walking out, well, he promises her, if this works out, pretty lady, I'm taking you out for the best steak dinner my first week salary will buy. And <laughs> she says, and you'd better believe I'll hold you to that good looking. So man, they're they're already. Yeah. Going pop pop him. He's too. Maybe you can pay the rent before you uh, worry about taking her out for a steak dinner. Well, I think that maybe that's how he's going to pay the rent. You know, that's, yeah. purple, that's purple pants. Jiggle. <laughs> and, uh, but he, he's walking out. He's, he's thinking to himself, now that is one very special lady. She's known me for 24 hours and already she's saving my life. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to get to know me, April or Miss Summers better. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, but there's a shadowy figure lurking yeah. in the alleyway, and it's yeah, absorbing. It's made of brick. <laughs> it's made of brick, yeah. And so apparently, the they who would be whatever they can't, or no, what are they? They who will will power. They who would be king. <laughs> no, Stupid they who will king. power. They know that Bruce Banner is the Hulk. Mm-hmm. So they sure do. So old uh, absorbing man over there, he's sneaking around watching Bruce Banner. Now you could just kill him as Bruce Banner, you know, but Absorbing Man's like, nope, I want to make sure and turn him into the Hulk before I fight. Yeah, it's no fun just breaking some pencil neck. We should also mention that up to this point in the issue, it seems like Bruce Banner's under the belief that he is no longer the Hulk. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but it, he was always trying different things to get rid of the Hulk, and none <laughs> of them really ever stuck. So yeah, not sure what um, he thought he did here, but clearly he did I, not I think, do it. Maybe the eggs with the milk in them at the beginning of the issue. So <laughs> yeah. He Maybe if you tried eggs. drinking them raw like Rocky Balboa, he would have had better luck. Yeah. So now we see our buddy uh, Jim Wilson, and he's hitchhiking. And yeah. he's dressed like quite the 70s outfit. Little red vest. <laughs> <laughs> and the blue pants. And he gets yeah. some uh, old white farmer guy to pick him up. And he's going to take him. Uh, he, wa- where's, he wants to go to New York City, right? Yeah, he wants to go to New York City with this guy. So I'll take you as far as like uh, yeah. the end of this road. And he's like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I don't. Where is he? They just said in the Great American Heartland. So yeah, he's probably he's like in Kansas. Kansas. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, hey, what if that old guy says, "All right, let's go to New York City." I'll take you as far as Muskrat Corners. <laughs> so I don't know where that is exactly. I think that's in uh, Pennsylvania. So he's going to take him a few things, but no. <laughs> uh, so all right, so Jim Wilson's heading to New York City because he's trying to find the Hulk. You know? Yeah, at this rate, he'll be there in like 12 <laughs> issues. <laughs> so now we go to the yeah, construction so site. Further, each issue. And there's a new building being erected, and uh, Bruce Banner's meeting that construction guy. 
And he's like, ah, so you know April, huh? She, you're her new tenant? And he's like, yep. And he's like, all right, because you don't look too strong. And he's like, ah, I'm stronger than I look. Yeah. I'm wearing purple pants. He's like, all right, buddy. Start yeah. lifting things. So he's just bag- hauling around bags of cement and whatnot. And uh, he's very happy. You know, it's an honest day's work. Yep. And plus, he gets a hard time. Oh, Somebody give him a chance. Yeah. So he, he's pretty happy about all this. And he's like, man, if I, I bet the Hulk could carry a bunch of these uh, bags of cement. Um, but he's like, but good Lord or good Lord willing, I'll never see the Hulk again. So, wow, <laughs> he really thinks time with the Hulk is yeah, over. This time for sure. He's gotten rid of the Hulk. So now we see a guy driving one of the uh, cranes there. And uh, he's really bored on the job. And he says, I'd go get unemployment, but uh, then I have to stay home with a wife all day. He doesn't like that. And he gets bonked in the face out of nowhere by <laughs> a mysterious individual. Of course, we know it's Crusher Creel. Yeah. But, uh, so what is he, what happens here, Jack? The big excitement. Uh, the crane starts to go berserk, just swinging this steel beam wildly all around. And, uh, all the guys are getting antsy. They're like, oh, God, that lunatic has flat out gone bananas. He's swinging that heavy I-beam right at us. And I can swear that, that there's somebody riding it. Sure is. Crusher Creel. <laughs> sure, man. The next page, you get a big splash page of him riding the I-beam. And his body's all, uh, you know, steel. And, uh, <laughs> but you can call me the absorbing man, Skradak. And uh, <laughs> kind of, so everyone's running away. And he he points out for his parents, he's like, here, I want that little bum right there. That's the guy I'm here for. And he's like, why don't you turn into the Hulk there, dummy, so I can beat you up. And he's like, I'm not the Hulk. I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to smash you anyway. And he yep. swings the uh, wrecking ball at him. <laughs> Tried to give and you at least a chance to have a way to fight back, but no. We could, I mean, we both have similar styles and pants. We could have been friends, but no. Because <laughs> sometimes Absorbing Man also has purple pants. A lot of the times. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, uh, but he swings the, the bow at him. Uh, Bruce dives out of the way, and then he gets too close to the edge because they're working up high in the building. And, yeah. Uh, and he falls out of the building to his yeah, parents. He's screaming, and we, we cut away to not see him oh, die. <laughs> here's the mysterious guy. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why don't you explain uh, the setup here? Uh, so we're back at Gamma Base, uh, you know, where they're always trying to hunt the Hulk. And uh, we got Thunderbolt Ross here, Doc Samson, Clay Quartermain, and a blonde man who was, like, uh, in a coma, essentially. Um, and they're like, oh, I don't know if he's ever going to wake up. But then turns out he does wake up. Um, he hasn't regained consciousness since he staggered in here and collapsed last issue. Uh, but he wakes up and just starts screaming. And they're trying to be like, oh, hey, you know, you're among friends here. Don't worry about it. And, uh, they're like, okay, who are you? And he's like, why I'm, I'm sweet Lord. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know who he is. Yeah. All right. So that's the tease for the he issue. Big, uh, <laughs> mysterious yeah. guy. Now, I don't know how this is possible. Maybe when, once you hear who this is, it'll make sense to you and you can fill in the details. But that guy is apparently the leader. Oh, wow. I wouldn't have recognized him without the mustache. <laughs> Does that make any sense whatsoever? Like, uh, well, I mean, when we talked about the, uh, when we did our last Hulk issue with the Peter David run, remember he looked more like he had, his brain was all weird looking and he thought it was just McFarlane, but it was because he had reabsorbed his gamma energy recently. Like he had been cured for a while. So this oh, may okay. have been during that period. Uh, where he was cured and was no longer a gamma mutate, essentially. And uh, so I guess that would make sense. Yeah, I, I forget what issue. I, like, they named, I, I read the issue, comes. they reveal that he's the leader, but it's it's a while yet. But, um, oh, look at that. I, love I, that I story expect to be an old Samuel Stern. That's, that's cool. Yeah. So right now we cut back and we see uh, Bruce Banner plummeting to his death. But uh, each panel, he, he starts turning into the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Periods of stress, apparently. Still bring it out. And Quo Wump, he hits the ground. And, uh, yeah, see, this is the great greatest Hulk here. 
He says, uh, bah, Metal Man knocked Hulk, Hulk off roof, tried to kill Hulk, but Metal Man failed. <laughs> you, Hulk knows you, Metal Man. Hulk has fought you before. Yes, they fought in the Hulk issue 125. Yep. Man and Hulk. And bah, Metal Man is just like puny humans Hulk hates. Metal Man talks too much. This is great, Hulk. This is the Hulk I love. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's fine for short doses. I I don't know that I can keep reading issue <laughs> after issue of this. <laughs> so he uh, jumps in, he hits him with the Roman Reigns spear, but uh, <laughs> Absorbing Man, he's uh, made out of uh, out of steel there, so he can eat, eat it, no problems. And then he cracks Hulk with his uh, ball and chain, and Hulk lands next to a a, a bin of red hot like uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Rivets. Oh, uh, like rivets. Yeah. yeah. And he chucks the rivets at Absorbing Man, and Absorbing Man just absorbs them. So now he's he's red, and he's uh, red hot as well with the rivets. And Hulk goes over to choke him, and he burns his hands. <laughs> I didn't know Hulk could burn his skin like that. But, uh, yeah, I guess so, eventually. And Absorbing Man is just laughing at him. And then, what? oh, he turns into concrete, and he smacks Hulk around again. And <laughs> then he starts choking Hulk with the chain from the ball and chain. And he starts absorbing the Hulk's strength, so now he's turning green. Yeah. And, yeah, even his outfit's green. But the Hulk has a foolproof plan how to get out of this jank. What does he do? <laughs> well, uh, as he does in most cases, just decides to smash. Uh, just starts <laughs> banging his fist on the ground. Uh, because it's all I can get a hold of and just basically brings the building down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because they're up, like we said, they're, well, yeah, he fell, so somehow they're back up high again. Wait a minute. How'd that happen? Uh, maybe they only fell a couple of stories, but not the whole way down. All right. So he, he's back in he, the. Maybe he jumped back up there. Oh, because he, yeah, the, like the Hulk or Bruce Banner fell, but then he jumped back up because Crusher Creel is still up, up near, near oh. the top. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a panel where he's jumping up. All right, so, uh, yeah, he brings the building down, and they're falling down. And what does Absorbing Man do, Jake? <laughs> this is where it gets weird, because he is holding his ball and chain. Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you the same thing. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I, from what so I can decide... tell, maybe because the ball and chain is part of his body, like, I, he like, can't absorb the metal. I always thought that's why he carried it around, so he could always yeah, absorb the metal. that's what I thought, too. Oh. But maybe since, that maybe since that changes too, like maybe it's not, he can't absorb that, you know, like that's part of his body, like his clothes were part of his body. So, mm -hmm. and that maybe that's the explanation here, but tell him what he happens here. <laughs> yeah. Instead, he decides to grab onto whatever is handy, uh, hoping that that's going to work and, uh, you know, make him strong enough to survive this fall. But turns out the only thing he, Around is a shard of glass that's that's fallen down there, <laughs> and so he turns himself into a glass man and hits the ground and shatters into a million pieces. <laughs> yeah, because they're falling all this debris around him, all these I beams and concrete. So he's like, I'll just grab anything, you know. Whatever <laughs> yeah. I grab, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> but he grabs a shard of glass. <laughs> that's a great ending. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's weird that he's still holding the ball and chain. So maybe if your your explanation is correct, that's the reason. But yeah, I think that uh, has to be the explanation because otherwise, yeah, there's no sense. I would do something like grab your shoelace or something. If you turn into <laughs> shoelace, I guess you but, would survive the fall. <laughs> but I, again, I think the clothes are part of the situation too. So I don't think you oh. can even do that. So no, like I would think it would be. The ball and chain, maybe he had it on him when Loki, you know, came along and gave him the thing. But the, this is a new outfit that those guys gave him. So I would think that that would be immune to those things. You That's know? a good point. That is a good point. Yeah. <laughs> or could he absorb the air? Like if you're falling through air, could you become air? Yeah, well, he did absorb helium. That's how uh, Thor beat him the first time. So. Oh, yeah. And he, I'll tell you a story here in a second where he absorbs water. And he becomes water. So, all right. But anyway, yeah, he absorbs glass. He hits the ground. He shatters. Dead. Oh. So he's done. <laughs> and, and Hulk's buried in that building, but he eventually, uh, you know, fights his way out of the uh, debris. 
And then we see those shady guys in their she disco ball. The disco ball. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, and they're just laughing it up. They're like, oh, well, at least that was interesting. You know, it's kind of fun. And uh, you win some, you lose some. It seems like you guys lose all of them. And they're like, uh, there'll be other times, other chances. Personally, I just can't wait. Yes, want to be fun. And so we still don't know who the shadowy guys are. But uh, anyway, so then the Hulk uh, staggers into an alleyway and he takes a nap, just like I do every night after dinner. And <laughs> Yeah, he's on some Doc Savage radio shows. It takes a nap, <laughs> but he slowly turns into Bruce Banner. But then we see another uh, shadowy figure lurking behind him. Man, that's a constant theme in his life: shadowy <laughs> figures lurking in alleyways. Yep. Now, it's like it's the alleyways, Always you can probably tell you can probably tell who that guy is by uh, reading this next issue. Everybody's favorite man brute, side by side with the master of the unknown, against the menace as old as time. Be here for. And call the doctor, dot, 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 Druid. That's right. That yeah. shadowy figure is Dr. Druid. <laughs> Thank God he's back. Yeah. The Fraser Crane. The future Marvel Avenger. <laughs> and we got lucky we missed him by one issue. But there it is. Yeah. That's uh, the Incredible Hulk issue 209. All right, so Absorbing Man, another little story here for you. Um, last week... Or maybe when we were talking off the air, uh, I mentioned this was a story, and you were like kind of new the finish to this story. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, I watched this show on YouTube called Comic Pop. Uh, well, that's the channel, uh, but they do a show called Back Issues where they they talk about whole like story arcs. And they did this Avengers uh, story arc that involved a lot of weird focus on the garbage men outside of Avengers Mansion and yes. stuff like that. They really were following the, the exploits of these garbage men. And it was just kind of like, huh? Why, why are we why are we dealing with this? But then it turns out that those garbage men had been collecting essentially when they picked up the garbage all the pieces of the absorbing man. So when they were all dumped at the dump, he was able to reassemble himself. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yeah, I went ahead and I checked out that issue, and like the, uh, Iron Man gets involved because the uh, the garbage truck was having trouble, like lifting the the guys were having trouble lifting the garbage into the truck outside Avengers Mansion. So he goes down yeah. and helps him as Iron Man. And then we follow these garbage dudes as they go their rounds for like a page or so. And then they end up at the dump and they're talking to other guys who were at that construction site picking up garbage. And yeah, once all the shards of glass get dumped together, Absorbing Man's like, all right, I can finally reform. Boom, he pops up into Absorbing Man. And yeah. then so for that issue in the next issue, I think it's issue 183, if I'm remembering correctly, of Avengers. And then 184. And uh, they fight him there. And during the fight, he absorbs like Captain America's shield and he becomes like adamantium. So that was pretty cool. And, uh, but at the end, he, his, the whole point is he wants to get on the ship and just get out of the country. And he misses the ship and he's really sad. And the Avengers keep bothering him. You know, he doesn't even want to fight. They just keep, and he's like, all right, I give up. Yeah, and he's like, just stuck in the trash for a long time. I just yeah. want to be done with this. <laughs> so he's tired of them all beating him up, you know? So he, he was trying to swim after the ship and he's like, yeah, I can't get it. So he's in the water. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to turn into water. And uh, so he just dissolves like into the ocean. And they think like he killed himself by doing that. But again, he comes back later. But I guess he he spent so much time as water and like it was so stressful trying to keep his body together and stuff. But he went a little loopy after that. And uh, kind of lost his head. But uh, yeah, too much time being water is never a good thing. Yeah. But it's a pretty cool story, though. I like this absorbing man. I like the cut of this guy's jib. He's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. He, hey, by he the way, he, he was in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well, the TV show. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. cool on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, what that do you was think Glenn Talbot, I believe. So, so many, so much of this uh, issue. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think of Len Wine's writing here? Because you're a big Peter David guy. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about Len Wine's Hulk? Uh, it was okay. It it kind of had that 70s Hulk show vibe of just him showing up yeah. in a different town and trying to get a job and things not going well. And, you know, he's got to move on afterwards probably because he's messed it all up. Um, But I liked all the little subplots they got going on here. Jim Wilson's trek across the country trying to find a yeah. Hulk. We get Doc Sampson and the mysterious guy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like that. They're moving moving things forward. A lot of little stories. That's always good. New love interest with April Summers. Yeah. 
Betsy or Betty and uh, Glenn Talbot Betty break Glenn up. Glenn Talbot quits. Yep. He's on the market again, so April Summers, your days are numbered. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like how this is all pieced together here, like the the structure of the book and all the store, the subplots and everything. So yeah, I think he did a good job here. And yeah, for a seventies book, I thought it was pretty solid. I don't know about you trash in seventies books. I mean, that's the greatest there. <laughs> uh, Jay Jaws, I could have done without Jay Jaws, but uh, oh yeah, <laughs> but Hulk fighting. I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous ending, but. You know, it was great. So that's a great ending. <laughs> Turns in the glass. Yeah, you know, we did not talk about though. Is there is a a Spider Man fruit pie ad? Oh yeah, that was, I don't know. This thing made no freaking sense to me at all. I didn't uh, read it. I skipped past it. But uh, yeah, so here we go. I'll, I'll sum it up quickly. Here we got Spider Man the Champ. And uh, first off, there's a there's a boxer here. The dressing room boxing champ. Aldo Moon J. What kind of a name is Moon J? <laughs> Why wouldn't you go with something M-O-M-J. simpler? <laughs> Just call him Moon-J. Jimmy. Uh, Aldo Moon J. And he gets a note on a knife just sent flying at his door. Dear Aldo, I'm going to get you before the ref can count two. Signed, the foe. And then there's the boxing match, and Spider-Man's changing. He's like, my my tingling spider sense tells me there's going to be a big fight tonight, and not just between the boxers. Aldo Moomjay is about to finish his fall to the canvas after a knockout punch by his opponent. One. I've always wanted to catch a champ in action, and then Spider-Man shoots a, a hostess cupcake into the ref's mouth before he can say two. <laughs> It also he's looks like, like he webs he webs the Aldo Moom J before he can hit the canvas. Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. And, <laughs> and yeah, then he's just like, oh, what's this? Mmm, delicious moist chocolate cake. And uh, they're like, finish the count, you bum. Never mind the count. I'll finish the referee, alias the foe. You're the only ref I know who can only count to two. How did you know, long crawler? <laughs> what the <laughs> heck is happening here? <laughs> I know it's really counted too. What does that even mean? <laughs> but whatever. Apparently, they they all just sit around and have you know hostess cut cupcakes now. Even though this guy's going to jail for being the foe, like he he's going to enjoy this one last cupcake before he goes. Yeah, I don't understand. Then Moon Jay says, "Thanks, Web Puncher," which is a weird nickname for <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> like Wall Caller, I get Web Slinger, but Web Puncher. <laughs> All right, so the foe, he throws that knife with the note, and the note says, Dear Otto, I'm going to get you before the ref can count to sign the foe. So Mm -hmm. Spider-Man thinks that... Webs him up, I guess, so that he can't get killed? So he can't be counted out because he technically doesn't get knocked down. So he he webs him up. But Otto Moonjay, the the champ, hey, you lost, buddy. That guy beat you. Like, he knocked you loopy. (laughs) Like, why are we pretending that you're not... You're still a champ. But anyway, so he webs him up to keep the ref from counting to two. But what's the bit about never mind the count? You're the only ref I know who can only count to two. (laughs) Yeah. Is that because there were two hosts cupcakes? (laughs) Like that's why he counts it? Maybe. I mean, I guess he had the whole thing about I'll get you before the ref counts to two, but. I don't understand why. Yeah, but why? Mean. Why can you only count to two? Is it yeah. because like the cupcakes come in packs of two? Is that what they're going for? Maybe. I don't know. When you have to put this much thought into an ad, you've clearly missed the mark. Don it's, Draper would not be happy. It's a real <laughs> mind bender. It's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. So, uh, getting back to our main event, uh, Salvi Seema's art here not the best. It's a little. Uh, a little loose and sketchy at times, um, but uh, yeah, I still it's, enjoyed it's it for the most finest, part. But it's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, he does a good Hulk. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this issue quite a bit. So uh, this sums <laughs> yeah, up everything. Be fun. Yeah, this is everything flea market fantasy should be about. So uh, it gets an eight out of ten for me. This is all oh, eight, out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Uh, you know what? I'll give it a six and a half. <laughs> six I'm bringing it decimal. It's been a while. <laughs> you like Peter David. You love Peter <laughs> David, Hulk. But, uh... All right. This was, yeah, this wasn't, this wasn't bad. There wasn't quite as much Hulk versus Absorbing Man as I thought. 
Yeah, the fight was pretty one sided. It was me. I was just beating the hell out of the Hulk, and then the Hulk just yeah. uh, smashed the building down. That's all he did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so. great. All right. So, what do you got for us next week, Jay? All right. So, next week, I figured we would, uh, kind of similar to what you did here, we'll do a book that we've already done before, but to talk about some other characters that maybe we haven't, uh, given, given their shine. So we're going to do uh, West Coast Avengers nice. number 46. So we can talk about a little group that represents my area of the world, the Great Lakes Avengers. <laughs> this was in the 80s? Great Lakes Avengers? <laughs> yep. yeah. What year is this? 89? Uh, I think so. Yeah, because I was going to say, I've never encountered them. I know they exist, but they they came in <laughs> after I was done reading comic so yeah west coast avengers 46 yeah we've done mm-hmm. one west coast avengers remember it was the one with the uh like they went back in time in the old west and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah bad things happened to uh mockingbird there yeah. <laughs> now we're out well the guy just punched her in the face remember that yeah, <laughs> yeah. they kidnapped her all right so i feel uh, like this one will be a much less controversial <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, was, I, I like the good uh, West Coast Avengers story. This will be something. So that's next week, issue 46. And again, if you're watching us on uh, YouTube, please like and subscribe. And until next week, don't get any jank on you.